friends welcome back to the new lecture on introduction to fluid power and hydraulic systems let's go for the new element in this particular topic now we are going to see the internal gear type of pump in the last time we have seen the external gear type of pump here in internal gear pump again we are going to use the two type of pump let us see the construction of this particular pump first of all now whatever this you are going to observe on the outer side that is what called as a casing so here name is given this is casing it has inlet port from the left side and outlet port from the right side this one so means fluid will be entering from this side and fluid is going out from this side then with the blue color we are having the external gear tooth so this is external gear tooth and this one purple color is the internal gear tooth now this internal gear and external gear they are in mesh only for this particular part so i can say that only three tooth of the external gear are in mesh with the internal gear whereas the other part is a blank one here most important part is called as a crescent the name for this particular yellow color is given as a crescent and crescent act as a sealing element while the fluid is flowing on a forward side direction here the, with the red color the flow of the fluid is shown it is moving on a forward side direction here what we have to do is we have to give input energy to this this particular gear that is the external gear and as external gear is in mesh with the internal gear internal gear will also starts rotating okay now if you compare this internal gear and external gear in the external gear pump we were using a two external gear pump whereas in internal gear pump we are using one as a internal gear pump whereas another is external gear pump and again at the center we are having a shaft from which we are going to give input energy to the pump let's understand how it works when we start and pump means when we are giving input energy to this particular central shaft this gear will start rotating as this gear will start rotating here you can see or you can concentrate on this particular part here you will see that the volume between the external gear and internal gear goes on increases so here you can see that the space is increasing or volume is increasing as space increases it creates a vacuum we know that vacuum means the pressure below the atmosphere so in this particular zone pressure will be below the atmosphere whereas this particular pipeline is connected to inlet port or inlet pipeline that pipeline will be inserted into the reservoir where the pressure will be atmospheric pressure as vacuum is present here this vacuum will suck the fluid from the inlet port and the, that particular fluid will enter here so when fluid enters here and as the gear passes in forward side direction when the fluid comes on this particular part or fluid comes on this particular part that fluid will get trapped between the gears and the crescent so you can see that this particular space it has trapped between crescent and two tooths of the external gear whereas if you see this particular part here the fluid is trapped between internal gear and the crescent and as the gears moves forward side direction the fluid which is present in this particular zone it may come here it may come here and it may move forward side direction so at a time fluid is flowing in the gap of external gear and internal gear and it will come here and when it moves here onward forward so here you can see that space is reducing or volume between the two gears are reducing as the volume between two gears are reducing it means that the fluid gets pressurized and after pressurizing the fluid the fluid will go outlet for the particular application that is actuator so here the principle is what because of eccentricity provided between external gear and internal gear here the space will increase and here the space will decrease when space is increasing the fluid will be get sucked inside and when space is decreasing fluid will be get discharged with high pressure and here we will get uh, output a uh, high pressurized uh, flare this is what working about the internal gear pump now this is animation for internal gear pump this is the inlet port this is the inlet port and this is the outlet port so inlet port crescent is provided here when the gears are moving forward the here the space will increase and here the fluid will be get sucked in this particular zone whereas as it moves forward the volume goes on reduces and as volume goes on reduces here the pressure will build and here at the output we will get the a uh, high pressure whereas fluid is get sucked into this one this will show you simple animation of internal gear pump as far as internal gear pump there are various advantage of using this particular internal gear pump let's discuss one by one non pulsating discharge so what your discharge you are getting it's not a pulsating some of the reciprocating pump they are giving a pulsating discharge means that's not a continuous here we will get a continuous discharge 
Next, excellent for a high viscosity fluids. Some of the fluid they are very viscous, like honey is there. Some of the oil are very thick. For that particular, we can use internal gear pump. Constant and even discharge, regardless of pressure condition. So pressure condition may be high or low. You will get a constant and even discharge. Operates well in either direction. So this particular can be uh, can be operated in either direction. Means if you refer a previous figure, in the previous figure. Here is the input port and here is the outlet port. But I can change the direction of rotation of this particular gear and input may provide here and output will be getting from this side. So that's why I can say that it can be operated in either direction, can be made to operate with one direction of flow with either rotation. So I can make I can fix one direction or either direction that depends upon us. Low NPSS net positive section head required for such kind of pump is less. Single adjustable end clearance. So end clearance is single adjustable. Easy to maintain. Maintenance this particular is quite easy. Flexible design offer application customized. So various customized application we can do it. So these are various advantages of internal gear pump. Let's consider disadvantage of this. Usually require a moderate speed. So it cannot be operated at very less speed. So if it has a moderate speed, medium kind of speed, then and then only will be operated. Second disadvantage is medium pressure limitation so we cannot achieve a very high pressure i can go only up to the medium level of pressure next is one bearing runs in the product pumped so sometimes this product may be used to pump the edible fluids like some milk is there or some juice is there at that time one of the bearing has to be operated in the product that is disadvantages overhang load on the shaft of bearing so overhang load which is quite dangerous and because of that the gear pump may get failed so that is what a disadvantage of internal gear pump let's discuss an application all varieties of fuel oil and lube oil all kind of the oil it can use is alcohol and solvents for that purpose also we can use it internal gear pump can be used as a polyurethane foam then food products such as a corn syrup chocolate and peanuts butter paint ink and pigments also can be used and for glycol also we can use an internal gear pump this is all about an internal gear pump working advantages disadvantages and application thank you very much for listening